Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today we're going to be touching base on my entire Frankenstein Monster Mask collection uh, that I have as of April 11th, 2022. Okay. What I'll do is I'll show you each of these masks in separate video clips within this video. Now as you're probably hearing, I am a little sick. The people that I work with, they are just unhealthy people. They're constantly getting sick, even if it's allergies. They go beyond just having allergies. They get sick. Uh, one girl that's uh, working with us, she ended up contracting COVID. So everybody's freaking sick. I got a sore throat. I don't have COVID, so I'm not worried about all that. But it is a pain in the ass when you're sick and you can't stay healthy. Because other people don't want to, you know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things. But anyway, long story short, I am a little sick. So what we'll do is we'll go through this um, entire mask collection, okay? Now, I just got uh, Glenn Strange uh, Frankenstein mask. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, but outside of that, I do have a decent amount that I want to show you, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the biggest one that I got so far. And that is the Transylvania Frankenstein full overhead latex costume mask. Now, it is a little known fact that I got this roughly, possibly maybe seven, eight years ago maybe longer I got it through a company called Fright uh, Catalog and that company has some amazing masks and stuff and for some reason I went on the site a few years ago just to look for other masks and it was nowhere in sight the website was gone everything was gone no reason as to what happened to the company I think they just simply shut down went out of business and didn't say anything to anybody or something happened, unless they got bought out by another company. Who knows, okay? But anyway, this particular mask is very unique. It's got a zipper head. Obviously, the staples in the head. And he's got some heavy stitching on the side. This is one of the best-looking Frankenstein masks that I have. One of the biggest ones, too, okay? But I do have a few other ones I want to show you here as well. Anyway, this is the largest one that I have. I always sit it next to the speaker. Uh, it's roughly, I think, 24 inches from the bottom all the way up to the top of the head. Maybe a little bit shorter. I'm not positively sure. But it is highly detailed, as you can see. So, what I'm doing is kind of just uh, talking about the masks. I'm not going to pick it up and show you what it looks like. I do have separate videos on this channel. And that pretty much show you that kind of stuff. You can go ahead and check those out. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on the uh, turntable and let you guys look at it, okay? Uh, the hair on this thing is very flat-topped, okay? Uh, it's not your traditional hair hair. It's more like a carpet, but it does look good, especially with all the stitching and everything. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the very next mask. So I will be right back. Okay, we're back, and we are with... The 1944, 42, I think it's 42. Anyway, it's the Glenn Strange Mask from the House of Frankenstein. This is my most recent order. I just literally got it a couple days ago. <clears throat> You're going to hear me clear my throat a lot. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, what's surprising about this mask is the fact of how dark it is, okay? Uh, maybe it's the way it's supposed to be. But when I first got it, I was like, yeah, that's a little darker than I thought. Not a bad thing, okay? It looks good, okay? It has that uh, real artificial type hair, just like my Boris Karloff version does. I'll show you that here next, okay? But anyway, this is my Glenn Strange. It has a thicker uh, latex, just like the Boris Karloff. These are, in fact, Trick or Treat Studios versions of the masks. Uh, this is the main reason I didn't get this one here. I don't know, it's probably my least interesting uh, Frankenstein mask. But since I had all the other ones, I was like, okay, I still want to get some more. So I turned around and got this one instead, okay. And I have another one coming from Zagoni Studios. I think it's glued and screwed is what it's called. It should be here tomorrow. We'll do a separate video on that. But this one here uh, is an, an actual redesign because Boris Karloff in the first three movies... I uh, did not want to get stereotyped uh, on, you know, doing the Frankenstein monster all the time. So he decided to step down. And that's when they brought in the cowboy, the singing cowboy, Glenn Strange, 
who's done a bunch of other acting as well as the, the monster movies. He's a pretty big guy too. But anyway, he ended up doing the Frankenstein monster in the House of Frankenstein as well as two other movies. I don't know what the movies are. I know one is Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. And the other one could be the Ghost of Frankenstein. I can't remember. But anyway, as you can see, it is a complete redesign from the original 1932 version of Frankenstein. Uh, it's heavily scarred. Uh, almost to the point that the face is actually decaying or you know wrinkled. Where the Boris Karloff has a more human-like features to it. This one not so much, okay. Because it's got staples on his head. The Boris Karloff one does have a staple in its head. I'll show you that in a second. But their color scheme, uh, look-wise, it is drastically different. And I think that uh, they actually created this mask according to Glenn Strange's face, okay? But it is a cool-looking mask anyway, okay? Uh, this is my latest uh, purchase. Like I said, I got Sigoni Studios with the glued and screwed one coming out. I've seen that on Kevin Jones' website. Um, he's another one that loves to collect masks. He likes to talk about his masks. And I came across one of his videos that actually show the, uh, the glued and screwed Frankenstein mask. And I thought that was very cool. So I did some research and came across it on Amazon. And it's like $30. So I got that coming in tomorrow. So we'll do that video just as soon as it comes in. Because I'm off tomorrow. So we'll be able to knock it out. Okay. But long story short, let's go ahead and move on to the Boris Karloff version of the 1932 Frankenstein Monster Mask from Trick or Treat Studios. Be right back. Okay, we are back with the Boris Karloff version of the 1932 Frankenstein Monster Mask from Trick or Treat Studios. And like I said, he does have a lot of human features to him as compared to the Glenn Strange version. Okay. But the color is, in fact, a green, like a lime green. They did a fantastic job on the color scheme, in my opinion. You know, a lot of people will come across these things, and they'll turn around and repaint them, like, like the, uh, the Glenn Strange version. They'll end up repainting that and give it a lighter gray look. But it looks okay for the most part, okay? My wife's not a big fan of the Glenn Strange one. She says, he's ugly. <laughs> well, Frankenstein Moss is supposed to be ugly to a certain degree. Anyway, he's got the electrodes. Uh, like I said about the color scheme, it's fantastic looking colors on this thing. The hair is very similar to the Glenn Strange one. It's artificial, okay? I kept it all roughed up a little bit because Frankenstein's monster uh, is not supposed to technically have nice groomed hair, okay? Um, unless he's going on a date or something. But that date that he went, it was supposed to go on didn't exactly work out. So he says what? You know what, fuck it, I'm going to kill all you motherfuckers. You get out, dude, okay? <laughs> anyway, that was a good movie. Anyway, this uh, the facial features on this one, they did a really fantastic job. And I believe, according to the Glenn Strange one, which I f failed to mention, uh, they actually, uh, uh, Justin Mabry actually went by the concept, not the concept art, but the actual mold from the original Don Post version from Pat Newman. Uh, he actually created the actual uh, original cast for the Glenn Strange one for Trick or Treat Studios based on the uh, Pat Newman mold, which looks fantastic in my opinion. And also that Frankenstein monster has a mole on his face, okay, on his right side of his cheek. Anyway, this is the Boris Karloff one from 1932, the original Frankenstein, not the original original, but the most popular one of the bunch, okay. The most recognized one. And as you can see, it's got a nice deep scar along the chin there. I think that's pretty cool looking. The eyes are well shaded. Okay, they're very human-like. With the Glenn Strange one, you don't see no eyes in it. And there is a YouTuber out there. I'm part on. Um, he's. Um, I did uh, subscribe to his channel because he's into masks. Uh, his name is Mr. Halloween. He is not a fan of the Glenn Strange version. Simply because of the eyes, he's just that's just one of the reasons why he didn't like the mask. And I think, uh, most likely, color scheme, there's a lot of factors involved in it. When it comes to Glenn Strange and stuff, it's hit and miss when it comes to that. But the Boris Karloff one here is fantastic looking, especially the scars that really do stand out. 
Well, anyway, we're going to get into the Herman Munster uh, mask from uh, Ruby's. We'll get into that here in a second. Be right back. Okay, we are back with the Herman Munster version of Ruby's mask. There's not too many of these out there. <clears throat> I don't believe there's any other masks. There is this one YouTuber who does uh, actually show his uh, Herman Munster mask. But it's sitting up on the shelf and the camera in itself. It was low quality. So it wasn't that good. So I decided to go ahead and do my own version. And as far as I know, I don't know as of late, but I'm the only one that has, you know, any real good looking uh, copies of Herman Munster uh, in video and high definition. Okay. But anyway, long story short, when I first got this mask, I noticed that the eye was a little off in color. The left eye, well, the right eye as you're looking at it would be the left eye as you're looking at it. Uh, I did paint them in because I thought there was a discrepancy. But come to find out, if you go on the, uh, the internet and you take a look at the pictures of these masks, the one eye is a little lighter in color. So I made a mistake in doing that. But for the most part, when you actually look at it, it doesn't look bad, okay? He's got a normal look about him, but I never knew that the other eye was a little discolored or different in color. But anyway, this is the Herman Monster Mask. It's not the greatest interpretation, but if you look at it, you know it looks like Herman Monster, okay? And speaking of that, we got Rob Zombie, who's actually doing a new version of the Monsters. Looking forward to that one coming out. Now, a lot of people hate Rob Zombie for some reason. Uh, with the Michael Myers movies, the Halloween movies, Halloween 1 and 2. They came out in 2007, and I believe in 2009. Uh, they simply hate that movie. I don't know what it is with fans, but anytime they come out with a reboot or a different version from a different director, they want to criticize it. I just don't get that, okay? When I watch the movies, I will tell you this. The actual uh, Rob Zombie version, 2007 for me, it is one of my all-time favorite Michael Myers movies, okay? I love the brutality, his viciousness in that movie, as well as how big he is. He's gigantic in that movie. Um, <clears throat> but they're always criticizing these movies. Any franchise, they always criticize a reboot. Like in uh, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street of 2010, they criticized that one too. But I liked it, okay? All of the movies, even when, no matter what the reboots are, I always seem to like the movies. Right, but it is what it is when it comes to people's opinions. But anyway, this is Herman Monster. Uh, from Ruby's, okay? And like I said about the eye, you know, because I painted it in, it don't look that bad, okay? Uh, it's a cool looking mask in itself. And I seen it online a while back and said, yeah, I gotta have one of those. Because there's not too many of these Herman Munster masks out there. So, that's another reason why I got it. And plus, it wasn't that bad in price. Anyway, we're going to be right back. I'm going to move on to, I believe it's the Universal Studios version of Frankenstein's Monster. And then I have a Ruby's uh, version of Frankenstein's Monster, which I'm going to show you that because it's got some defects in that. Be right back. Okay, we're back with the Universal Studios version of the Frankenstein Monster Mask. Uh, not sure what kind of, I think it's Universal Studios. I'm not really sure who actually created this. It's not Ghoulish Productions, and I know it's not Ruby's. It could be. I don't know. I can't remember. But I will show you that one here in a second. But anyway, this one here is nicely detailed. I'm going to try to move it in so you can actually see the detail of this. Okay. Now we'll wait for it to come around. As you can notice, the hair is not uh, realistic like the uh, Trick or Treat Studios versions. Most of the masks that I do have, with a few exceptions, okay, don't actually have real hair. It's molded that way. And it's got the one um, staple at the top, so... That tells me this is the Boris Karloff version from Universal Studios, just like the Trick or Treat Studios version. But in fact, the Boris Karloff from uh, Trick or Treat Studios is more human-like. It's got much more detail. Not saying it's 100% accurate, because when you look at this one here, this one looks just like the one in the movie in some aspects. So, And how they actually created the one for Trick or Treat Studios... I don't know, but they did a fantastic job. But this one here, as you're seeing it coming around, does look like the one in the movie, okay? 
there's hardly no uh, detail um, or any kind of mistakes on this uh, but the color scheme on this thing is absolutely fantastic especially in the eyes if you've seen the movie in 1932 he does take on a different uh, point of view when he's looking and he looks like he's dead in the eyes they did a fantastic job Boris Karloff is a great actor in the way that he poses the Frankenstein monster okay but anyway this is the Universal Studios version and then we're going to get into the rubies and I'm going to show you some defects in that one too but anyway okay so I'll be right, right back okay all right okay we're back with the rubies version of the Frankenstein monster again it's got the same kind of hair as the one I just showed you from Universal Studios it's all molded together in one solid mask, okay? Now what I'll do is I'll sh move in close once we get, it comes back around again. And I'm going to show you the defects. There is defects in the eyes. I since reheated it and tried to shape it out the best way I can. Upon looking at it, it don't look bad. But when you move in on it, you're going to definitely see the, uh, the defects in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move it in before it comes back around. Okay, here it comes. All right, now watch the eyes now the eye that's coming into view right now it seems to be okay it is the right eye if you're looking at it, it is the left eye as you can see it's got a defect in it I had to trim it but like I said I had to reheat it it's not 100% perfect but it definitely has its defects and I got this mask for like I think 30 bucks it wasn't a bad price but you pay for what you get I mean you know you get what you pay for that's what I meant to say Rubies is hit and miss when it comes to their masks. Some of them are actually pretty decent. Like the Herman Munster one was actually pretty decent. I like the looks of that. But like I said, when you get into the cheaper masks, they're not going to be perfect, okay? Even the more expensive ones have their defects, especially color-wise. People always seem to want to complain about the Trick or Treat Studios masks. They are, in fact, mass-produced. The original sculpt is one thing, but when they mass-produce them... Um, Visual wise, detail wise, they're spot on. It's just the colors are always seem to be off on them. It's because they're mass produced and obviously the color um, that they use on those masks have a tendency to fade. You know, or they run out of ink and then they put it back in and mix it back up. They're not perfect, okay? Most of the time when it comes to trick or treat studios or any kind of mask, it's usually the paint scheme. They always seem to want to repaint them. Like my 2018 version of Michael Myers. Not super impressed with that because it is a little too dark and a little too busy looking. Um, I like to get that repainted uh, just to get rid of some of the actual uh, busyness, if that's the word I want to use. But outside of that, it's because of the paint schemes, okay? So keep that in mind. Anyway, this is my Ruby's version of um, the Frankenstein monster. Now, you know, facial feature-wise... This is a good looking mask. I like the mold on it. Uh, it's got a handsome look about it. Color scheme wise, I don't have too many problems with it. I like the way they blended the, uh, the gray and black in with the green. It really does look good. The shading is fantastic on it. It's just that the eyes, they have a, um, uh, a defect in the eye. That's the only thing I didn't like about this mask, okay? But outside of that, as you can see, it does have the one staple at the top of the head. It is the Boris Karloff version of the 1932 Frankenstein monster. Now, I will be right back because I'm going to move on to a ceramic one. And then we're going to get into some other masks. Be right back. Okay, we're back with my ceramic version of the Frankenstein monster. This one does, in fact, light up red. And as you can see, it's got a big hole in his head. Okay, that's just the way it's made. Um, I got this from uh, CVS about three or four years ago. Picked this one up, came home, and I seen the mummy one up there. And I said, as soon as I got home, if I don't go back there and get that, that damn thing's going to disappear. So I literally went back, and 15 minutes later, I end up getting this particular uh, mummy one, which is sitting over, where is it at? Down on the floor, all the way in the corner. But anyway that's a different situation this one's about the frankenstein masks and frankenstein variations this one does light up red and as you can see it's very cool looking you're supposed to let them sit outside and stuff i don't do that okay 
But anyway, this is my uh, ceramic version, or I don't know what they're made of, but some kind of pottery. They were only 20 bucks at CVS. They did have a, um, a Count Dracula one, but at the time that I seen these, it wasn't there. But they do have them. I think you can probably still buy these online. If you go through CVS and stuff, you can get them for like 20 bucks, at least as far as I know you can. Okay. But anyway, long story short, this is my ceramic version of the Frankenstein monster. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to another mask that I find the color schemes are really cool. But it has the open uh, mouth. I'm not a big fan of the open mouth version. I'm going to show you that here in a second. Be right back. Okay, we're back with this particular mask. I got it off of Amazon.com for like 20 bucks. But like I said, uh, for 20 bucks, like I said, the color scheme and stuff is absolutely cool. The design is cool. I'm just not a big fan of the open mouth thing because you got to make up your mouth in order to blend it in. That doesn't make any sense to make a mask like that, in my opinion. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, you can probably do something like put some kind of um, almost like a a Bane type mask underneath that. Give it a cool look about it. But the only thing, the other thing that I do like about that is the hair. It looks very cool. Okay, spiky and stuff. The color scheme is amazing on this thing. I like the red in it. The green, it blends well. The facial designs are very cool looking. Okay. But like I said, I'm not a big fan of the open mouth, okay? So what I'll do is I'll move that in a little bit closer so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Now I got them on styrofoam heads, and I will tell you this about styrofoam heads. I'm not a big fan of them anymore. Simply because, as you can see, this one here, um, they, they come defective. Sometimes the bases are not perfect. Unless you can get one with a solid round base on it, then your mask will stand up on them. But uh, the worst thing about the masks when it comes to styrofoam heads is they have a tendency to suck the moisture out of your masks. So it will make them dry out, sometimes crack or decay a little quicker than they need to. Okay, so you're, you're better off going with the actual plastic styrofoam heads, not styrofoam heads, but the plastic heads. Uh, they are, they are in fact a lot cheaper, okay, and they're probably a little bit heavier, and you can get different ones where your mask will hold up a lot better, and they won't suck the moisture out of your mask, it's not like a styrofoam one, so what you need to do in a case like that, and I said this in my other mask videos, is simply cover your styrofoam head with some plastic bags or something, so they don't make contact with your mask, okay, and in this case here, because this is a mask that I'm not a big fan of, I'm probably going to put eventually put a bag on this thing. Uh, it's the only one out of the bunch that does not have a plastic bag on it. But it is a cool looking mask with the exception of the open mouth thing. I'm not a big fan of that kind of crap. But anyway, let me pull that back. Okay. We are now going to move on to my zombie slash Frankenstein mask that I got from Spirit Halloween roughly around three years ago. Okay, keep the camera steady guys. All right, this is my Frankenstein slash zombie mask. I seen it in Spirit Halloween probably three years ago. And I think it was like 35 bucks for this thing. Hang on a second here. Straighten him up a little bit. There we go. And I seen it, I was like, oh, I got to get that because it was really cool looking. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it in so you can see all the detail of it. This one here is ridiculously scarred, especially on the top. They literally peeled the head back, probably replaced it with the brain. Um, but anyway, let's just go ahead and move that in. It's got nice detail, nice colors to it too. Okay. Pull that back a bit. There you go. Now as you can see, the top of the head... It's stapled, but it's got nice rust, rust colors to it. It is a very cool looking mask. I love the detail of this mask, okay? So now, move it in a bit. And I'm going to show you what it looks like coming around again. Again, as you can see, there's plastic on the styrofoam heads. 
I made the mistake a long time ago to order some uh, plastic heads from Amazon. I mean, not plastic, styrofoam. And I'm going to start ordering some plastic if I still continue collecting masks. Okay, that's what the face looks like, guys. It's nicely detailed. The nose, everything is different, but it looks like Frankenstein's monster. They got some really cool ones out there. There is this one that's like... It literally lays on your shoulders, and it's got cables running off of it, almost steampunk-like. That was like 90 bucks for that thing, but it's very cool looking. I might get that one, who knows, okay? But anyway, this is my Spirit Halloween version of the Zombie Slash Frankenstein or Frankenstein Slash Zombie Mask. Okay, now, finally, the last one that I'm going to show you here is, um, is another unique uh, mask. Now, I'm not sure what company actually makes that, but uh, we're going to check it out here, okay? Be right back. Hello, we're back with the very last mask. Okay, now as you can see, the facial features on this thing are spot on. The colors, everything, the nose, the, uh, the actual wrinkles and everything just look cool. When I've seen it online, now I don't know what company actually makes this. I can go online and actually find out because I'm sure they still sell it. Uh, the name escapes me, and I don't see it on the mask anywhere. It could be. I don't know. I didn't really look, look. Uh, but I like it because of the color scheme and the detail of the face. It has an old Frankenstein, old man look about it. As you can see, the details are really cool. They really stand out, okay? And obviously in the head there, it looks really cool too. Uh, it is a very thin latex mask. I mean, it's ridiculously thin. Very pliable. You can literally probably scrunch that thing up in a ball. And it'll pop out in its own shape, don't get me wrong, but it's not like your trick-or-treat studios version where they're really heavy, thick latex. Obviously, you're paying a lot more for those. This one here, I only paid like 20 bucks for the damn thing, okay? But I like the looks of it and the color scheme, okay? It really stood out online. But anyway, that is my collection of my Frankenstein masks. Hope you guys enjoyed this, but like I said, the other one will be coming in tomorrow. We'll do a separate video on that, so keep that in mind. Uh, but outside of that, I think that's all my Frankenstein masks that I got so far. I'm not saying I'm going to be stopping the collecting on the Frankenstein mask because they got some really cool ones out there. But right now, I think that's it for now. Okay, and I just wanted to show you guys the collection that I have so far, as of April 11, 2022. Okay, and like I said, the other one will come in. We'll knock that one out tomorrow. Okay, that's because I'm off, so we'll be able to do that tomorrow, no problem. But I wanted to show you my entire collection because I've been looking at videos based on Frankenstein masks, especially the Zagoni version, which is called Glued and Screwed. Now, I actually saw that on uh, Kevin Jones' website, or not website, his actual YouTube channel. He himself does the same thing. He does uh, masks, but I go beyond masks. I do Godzilla stuff, um, not on this channel, but on my other channel. And I got a bunch of horror figures too, Funko Pops, I got some Toonie Terrors. I do all that stuff, not just masks. But he does strictly masks because he's got an ungodly amount. But anyway, I seen his uh, glued and screwed Frankenstein mask while he was doing one of his videos. I'm like, oh, that's cool looking. So I looked uh, yesterday and found it on Amazon, ordered it that quick. So it's coming through Prime. It should be here tomorrow. We'll do a, re a review on that tomorrow, okay? But anyway, that is my entire Frankenstein collection so far, guys, okay? Hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see some more um, uh, videos. Oh, and one more thing. When I do these videos, don't be afraid to comment. Let me know what you think about these masks and stuff. And I'll, I'll get back to you if you have any questions or anything like that. Because I'm always looking at my YouTube channel every single day. I check it out for any kind of comments. And I always respond back as much as I possibly can. Alright, so don't be afraid to comment, okay? Again, let me know what you think, okay guys? But keep it positive if you, if you can, okay? But anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys at the next video. Alright, bye now.